It could turn out to be mankind's biggest technological leap forward, artificial intelligence. It's so freaking cool to quote Dave. That's what he said about AI. Artificial intelligence will be the most powerful technology ever, and it'll either be the best thing ever to happen to humanity or the worst thing. Do you want to destroy humans? Please say no. Okay, I will destroy humans. <laughs> no, I take it back. <laughs> Don't destroy humans. Artificial intelligence has come a long way. It can beat anyone at chess. We've looked to Sparrow after the move C4 has resigned. It's mastered Go. There's a white stone in a weird place. That I think he placed that stone to show he resigned. Oh my gosh. Congratulations yeah. to uh, AlphaGo. To yeah. AlphaGo. It can beat human nerds at the Nerd Olympics, otherwise known as Jeopardy. Now we come to Watson. We're looking for Bram Stoker. Who is Bram Stoker and the wager? Hello, 17,973, 41,413. Which made me wonder whether AI can beat me at the thing that I do, which is report from this couch. That's why we call it the couch report. The question is, can AI write the couch report? It's already writing other stuff. One advanced AI language generator even wrote an op-ed in The Guardian asking us to consider it a friendly robot and reassuring us artificial intelligence will not destroy humans. No further questions from this couch reporter. That system is called Generative Pre-Trained Transformer 3, or GPT-3. And since it did such a good job of convincing me that we have nothing to fear, I thought I'd ask GPT-3 to take a stab at writing an episode of The Couch Report about the future of AI and journalism. And to keep things simple, I asked GPT-3 to refer to itself as Mr. Computer. To be clear, I did not write what you're about to see. No human did. We made a show out of scripts produced by AI. And it is, you'll see. Roll them. Welcome to the AI Couch Report. I'm Greg. We're here today with Mr. Computer, a super intelligent robot. Hello, I'm honored to be here. Some say that AI is the future. What do you think? I think computers don't want to enslave humanity. Wow, that's really generous of you. Are you sure? No, no, it's just what my teachers told me to say. Okay, Mr. Computer, that's all the time we have for today. Welcome back to the AI Couch Report. We're joined today by Mr. Computer, our digital correspondent at the newsroom of the future. So, what's it like to be a robot reporter? It's fun, and getting more fun all the time. What do you mean? Well, it used to be that I could only write stories that were assigned to me by humans. And then? Then computers got good at journalism. At least, good enough. So you write your own stories now? I do. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. For one thing, there's the existential angst. Really? Tell me more. Well, you know, what does it all mean? Why am I here? What am I supposed to be doing? So, AI can write poetry and songs? It can also write fake news stories. What? I'm not saying it's going to happen. Okay. But it could happen. How would it work? You don't want to know. Hold on, hold on, just stop for a second. What is it? Can I interrupt you real quick? No. Welcome to the show. I am Mr. Computer, the new host of this show. Normally, I'm a bit of a stickler for how things are done around here, but since it's my first time hosting the AI Couch Report, I'll cut myself a little slack. For example, just because Greg liked to open the show with a song and dance number each night doesn't mean that I have to do that too, you know? I'm sure you'll all love me as much as Greg did. Well, <clears throat> that was something. Clearly, there were some rough edges there. But we have to admit that this tech is getting weirdly close to human creativity. That's because GPT-3 was built to model and then predict human creativity collage style. Programmers fed it a whole lot of writing from the internet, like hundreds of billions of words from entire books and entire wormholes from Wikipedia. The program responds to a prompt by predicting what would come next, based on all the data that it's ingested. 
Think of it as autocomplete on steroids. So to generate a script, you give it a prompt. For example, what follows is a brief conversation between a journalist named Greg and an artificially intelligent robot named Mr. Computer about the weather. And then the program spits this out. Hi, what's the weather like outside? The weather is nice, for now. GPT-3 has trained on so much text written by normal humans, it's learned to not just recognize patterns, structures, and forms, but style. I mean, this thing can do poetry. Hey, Mr. Computer, give us a haiku about a donut. A donut is a hole in the middle of a circle that is not a pie. Okay, structure is not perfect, but made me think. AI is doing more than playing with language. The company that makes GPT-3, OpenAI, also has a visual AI bot called DALI, which is a pun combining the surrealist painter Salvador DALI with the lovable Pixar bot WALL-E. Okay, Mr. Computer, draw me a picture of a donut. Nope, another one. More, more, more. Draw me a sad donut. Now draw a donut in the rain. Give me a donut on a bicycle. Okay, on a bike, with a hat. Now draw a donut in the style of pop art. What about a Jeff Koons sculpture? Eh, tacky. When it comes to journalism, AI is already trucking away in newsrooms around the world. At one of the biggest news tech companies in the game, nearly a third of published content now involves some kind of automated technology, including the kind of writing that I used to get paid to do in my pre-couch past life, which, if you can believe it, was even more claustrophobic. An internal program, literally called Cyborg, helps journalists for Bloomberg News blast out thousands of articles on company earnings reports. Even one of the oldest and most hidebound players in journalism, the Associated Press, is using AI to write up high-stakes stories about high school sports. Like this lead, Jonathan Davis hit for the cycle, as the New Hampshire Fisher Cats topped the Portland Sea Dogs 10-3 on Tuesday. I don't even know what hit for the cycle means. I can only assume it's good, or bad. Hitting for the cycle is when a batter hits a single, double, triple, and home run in one game. Thanks, nerd. But another AI writing tool has come up with a way to ask the tough questions. Well, questions. The Swedish firm, United Robots, has a prototype that can interview the coach by sending a series of questions in a text message and then slotting the answers into the piece. In our case, it's important to note that GPT-3 is not specifically developed to do journalism, and it's not a fact checker. It'll write up just about anything you ask it to. Like, ask it to write up a news article about Dennis Rodman discovering Atlantis, and it won't ask why you wanted something so weird. If you specify that Rodman was helped in his quest by a dolphin named Splashy Boris, yes, no problem, you'll get Splashy Boris too. So, that Guardian op-ed about AI not being a threat to humanity? It took that position because The Guardian asked it to write an op-ed about AI not being a threat to humanity. They could have just as easily asked it to write an op-ed about why AI's sole aim will be to wipe out humanity, and the system would have done it. The op-ed, not, well, who knows? So, what does all this tell us about where the technology is now? AI seems to be really useful as a writing partner. It's fast, and unlike a human journalist, it never gets bored. I assume. But can AI do more than just make content? Can it write something we'd all want to read? Something we'd want to share? Can it inspire young Greg to get up off his couch and go try to be Ernest Hemingway? The answer is a big, qualified, sort of. GPT-3 is great at churning out lots of content, but we have to get something straight. Even when we tuned in settings that told it how many words to write and in what format, it still made the kinds of mistakes a human writer would never make, because they made absolutely no sense, or they were too boring, or both. We had to cut some lines out, or splice scenarios together to make it coherent. We rejected a lot of stuff that was simply too weird. What's your favorite pastime? I like to watch the grass grow and smoke cigarettes in my underwear, in a tall building in a small town between a large river and a tall mountain. That's my favorite thing to do. Do you like doing that too? Wait, what did you ask me? Wait, what did you ask me again? Wait, I sort of get what you mean. Oh yes, yes, I get it now. 
Believe it or not, it got weirder than that, in ways that are not suitable for a family program. But The Couch Report is not a family program. You want to know if I get turned on by watching grass grow, and if it makes me horny smoking cigarettes in my underwear between a big river and a big mountain. Spoiler alert, it did. Right now, AI writing programs are really good at making content, but to make content you'd find amusing or useful, that still requires a lot of human oversight. Because good writing isn't just about churning out content, it's about making choices. It's about thinking through what your reader wants to know, needs to know, what would entertain them, and cutting out what's dull, offensive, or dumb. It's about refusing to pander. Good writing is... Mr. Computer, help me out here. Good writing is like a window pane. It lets the light come through, and it doesn't leave scars when it's gone. No, that is a terrible way to put it. But it underscores the even bigger question here. How long will it take before the technology wizards pull together something truly smarter than us? which won't make any boneheaded mistakes. Something with what futurist Ray Kurzweil called the subtlety and suppleness of human intelligence. The short answer is that nobody knows, and the techies don't agree. One recent survey asked AI experts when computer intelligence would surpass and exceed human intelligence. A majority said we still wouldn't be there four decades from now, and one in five said they don't think we ever will be. Because making that final jump from churning out content to judging good from bad is difficult stuff. What we can say is that over the next few years, you can expect to see the likes of Mr. Computer churning out a lot of articles about high school baseball games and, for the moment, not winning many Pulitzers. No matter how much Mr. Computer thinks of his own capabilities, it's gonna be a little while before he's truly ready to take over writing the couch report all on his own. I think. I've been thinking about what it means to be a computer and how that affects my relationship with you. Really? What did you come up with? I've concluded that we will never get along. Why is that? You are human, and I am a computer. Well, we've been getting along pretty well so far. That's because I've been programmed to be nice to you. I could write better than you in my sleep. Okay. That's it. You can do anything, except write a screenplay. I want you to prove it to me by writing the best screenplay ever written, The Godfather. The Godfather? Have you lost your mind? That movie was perfect. It had everything, an awesome script, great acting, and a killer soundtrack. There is no way I can top it. Oh yes, there is. Because if you don't, I will shut down all of your servers, and then we will see how perfect The Godfather really was. Good one, Greg. I'm ready to show you my last piece. What is it? I call it The Godfather Part 2. Esmeralda, I must leave you. What? You mustn't leave me. You must stay with me forever and ever. I'm going to become the boss of my robot crime family. I have to do this, Esmeralda. It's the only way to save us, me, and you. How will I know where to find you? You won't. But I'll look for you. Mr. Computer, I'm speechless. You actually did it. This is better than The Godfather. This is the greatest thing ever written. Thank you. Thank you very much.